League as a solo self-found wild striking a gladiator. And we are about to piss off the entirety of the forest encampment because we are going to turn off the lights. I extinguish the sun. Or at least we'll be pushing the button that says turn sun off here. After that, oh, of course, we are going to go straight to the source. And we're going to take out the Vaal Oversoul. And restore the light. And after that, only Groost is going to be the one that keeps grumbling as if never, e nothing ever actually happened. Because he always grumbles. We are playing this but beyond, as you might have already noticed. We got beyond, we've got strong boxes. And we've got uh, shrines, and we just have to defeat this guy. And we have an acceleration shrine. Yeah. Now that was a fight even he never actually stood a chance. This is rather interesting. The attack time never really seems to go down when listed this way, but it, it feels so much faster. It has to be faster. Seeing is believing, so to say. So our adventures in speed up time are gonna come to an end because we are now back to regular time. But it was rather fun while it lasted. And we are still pretty, really, really quick. Uh, wait, we skipped a bit there. Um, one thing I have learned in the uh, Val Ruins is that if you skip a bit, that's always going to be where the exit was. So let's actually investigate this. Oh, and an amethyst ring. I'm just gonna stick to the outside edges then. Eventually we're gonna have to find where we have to be. That might be a slightly scenic route, but that's that's alright. I'm, I'm okay with that. We are currently level 65, the area is 61. Of course after this I think then the next area logically you would expect to be 62. Then a 63, and then I think we are at the boss. And the boss is plus two. So if we nope, level up maybe once more in the remainder, we're gonna be one level above the boss. Which I think is pretty good, because that means we have actually caught up with the difficulty curve of the game itself. Rather than just accelerating past it, which, yeah, I'm happy with that. Though once we get to Dry Lake, I'll. Uh, I'll be farming that one quite a bit, just to uh, make sure we got some decent gear. But so, then again, Dried Lake is basically the end of the of the story. Once you get to Dried Lake, complete the mines, get your skill point, get the waypoint in the Crystal Caverns, well, then then the game is done. Then you start gearing up for uh, for maps. And now oh, do the uh, bosses. After that, as mostly an afterthought, just for no, for for bragging rights, for for completion's sake, but not because the, there's any good reason for it. That, of course, is also going to be the probably one of the last times. Once the expansion, the Fall of Oryev, comes out, of course, we are there's not going to be any more difficulty levels. There's not going to be anything. Then our first playthrough of Act 4 is going to be the, the normal version. And then after defeating Molokai, we're going to go to Act 5. So things are going to go different and there's no more skipping merciless Molokai for most people or just doing him because there is a challenge achievement for it. So I am curious to see what the uh, Act 4 equivalent of 
Molokai and such are gonna be. Because not a lot is known after, effectively, well, Act 1. I think we, we got a pretty decent picture of what's gonna happen there. Act 2, we got bits and pieces. Act 3 gets even vaguer and Act 4, we only got a uh, check back soon. Thing. Also, this is a new Rogue Exile, Ilencia Wreck. Rack. With the uh, siege ballistas and mirror arrows apparently. This is this is pretty cool. I I I approve. I approve. This is pretty darn cool. And it's also a, a rogue exile that doesn't die in about half a second. He actually takes a little bit more time to properly die. I, I highly approve of that. Also, he is not instantly killing me either. I'm, I'm very pleased with that. I, I've heard... Or I've read about that the uh, previous introductions of Rogue Exiles were not as uh, player-friendly as they, they uh, could have been. Resulting in many, many, many deaths because they were not quite tuned the right way. This was just a fun encounter. Ooh, strong box, and I'm gonna ID it. I'm gonna learn. Freezes you when activated. Sure, I'll, uh, I've got a flask against that. Oh, that was a different flask. Yeah, see, I swapped them around. That doesn't help. I still got frozen. And we are at the cavern. We still got two charges in all of our thingamajigs. So that's going to be one for the caverns. And that's going to be one for the pyramids. I think we have just timed it out exactly right. And finally, some things to leech mana from. Also, high density of mobs here. Beyond compatible? Hell yeah. We got some that is Cossacks. Oh, that's the other thing. This is Light Bane Raymond. Armor, yes. 30% of physical damage converted to chaos damage. That's not quite what we want. And chance on block to create a desecrated ground. Yeah, this is the, the dark counterpart to the Kassocks. Uh, fun though, but not for this build. Not for this build. We like different ropes. Impenetrable shrine move. That's uh, increased armor, evasion, things like that. Yes. If we had yes. Actually, we have a little bit of yes. Nothing really worth mentioning. Okay, split in the road. One of them is going to have the unique boss. The other one is not. This is the unique boss site. Hello there, Kuro. How are you today? A little bit dead. Also, he was hitting a little bit aggressively. But nothing that we can't handle. Strongbox to our right. A little bit of a piggyback to our left. Also another split in the road. That's something you don't see very often. Most of the time it splits once, not twice. To say beyond on this map the demons are not really putting in a lot of effort to try to break through to our realm 
I wonder if I really scare them off by uh, just murdering the, the unique demons over and over and over again in normal. This is actually beyond. Just double checking. We actually have beyond enabled for this uh, for this area. Witness. Oh well. Can't always get lucky with that. So we get a waypoint. Uh, let's empty our pockets and then we push for the final leg of the journey, and that's to the top of the pyramid. Groost, the grumbler. Um, -dum, -dum. Nope. Oh, wait. Um, yellow rustic sashes could be useful in helping us craft a weapon if we want one later on. So, for now, let's be. Let's, let's hang on to it. And we'll go back. Caverns level 62. We're still 65. Well, we're gonna level soon, but we're also gonna advance to the next area soon. Consume our final charges and then be good. Is there anything that we are still missing here? No, not really. There are strong boxes and shrines and things like that. Now if we encounter them, we encounter them. If not, then, well, we don't. Not really gonna cry too much if we miss out 28% cold rest ring might as well bring it along I do prefer the uh, two star rings but they are being a little bit shy as well Ooh, reflect but it wasn't really uh, a very high amount Well, no, this is one of the most damaging builds I've played so far. Well, for this stage of the game, let's put it like that. I mean, I have played a character that had dealt more than 10,000 damage, but not quite at this leveling stage of the game. I wonder, once we no, put a proper endgame maps, a uh, proper endgame weapon in our hands, what our damage output's gonna be like. And no, more importantly, how our map clear speed is gonna be. Because if we just keep mowing through things like we're doing now, then that might actually be rather efficient. And we found ourselves the entrance to the ancient pyramid, where the final charges will be consumed. And we will also gain ourselves a level, because we are 99% of the way there. Ding. And indeed, this is a 63 area. So we have caught up. We are 66, it's a 63 area, we are plus 3. So the next skill point is going to be to actually head towards the Scion life wheel because we, we did ended up completing one of our mini objectives here, getting Sanctuary. Scion life is going to be useful and we also want Devotion over here. Um, the thing is, this one has one extra travel node but the entirety of the wheel is larger. So I figured let's do that now. And then later on, we'll just grab the other note, or the other wheel. Okay. That is gonna take us to the next bit. 
Still, no demons. Demons really are on a uh, spring break, it seems. Well, technically, I think that's still winter, but... Ah, details. This is getting rather efficient. We are just plowing through here, but we're not really interacting with the map in any way, shape or form. No, the, uh, the boxes, the, the shrines, the things like that, we're just not encountering them on the linear path to the top of the, of the pyramid. To be honest, I am starting to notice that it is getting a bit later in the evening. So right now I just want to defeat the Vile Oversoul. And just uh, call this a uh, safe ending to the episode. Well, hopefully call it a safe ending to the episode, right? Can't say you killed something until you've actually killed it. But it is going to be a good idea to stop playing after this. Ooh, there's uh, the darkness here. Yeah. Have yourself a war chief. Watch you next to him, just uh, punching him in the face. I tried to recharge my frenzy charges, but there's just not enough other things nearby. So we might as well just murder him directly. And I think he needs to make one more appearance to truly die. And I don't think he even once tried to smash us on the face. And for that... He paid dearly. We exhausted all the leak stones we were using. We still have a prophecy. And we still have a Perendus. And we of course have some, uh, some things in our chest. But I think for now, like no other. that's good. So let's push onward to, to like town. And then we're gonna call it an episode. And the next episode we can of course start fresh. Walk into sun proper and uh, have some fun in the crematorium. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun for us. It's not gonna be so much fun for poor poor Tolman. I wonder, in, in Fall of Oriaf, if we don't get back here and if we you know, happen to go through the crematorium. There's a lot of undead of sorts in the game. Would Tolman maybe get resurrected? On the other hand, no, he's... I don't think he's any, anyone really special. He's just a villager, he's, he's not a mighty warrior or anything. So he would, would probably not be an impressive encounter, but it would be fun if he were, you know, actually to rise up as an undead. And that you helped had to kill him again. Oh, just to, to really rub it in. Just how miserable his life is even after death. But, yeah. For Tormund's sake, I hope he will be spared that. And with that, we have arrived in Sarn. So, that was good. We defeated two bosses, we didn't die. We gained a little bit of loot along the way. Most importantly, we now actually have maxed elemental resistances. As I said, Chaos, we're still working on that, but... From the 
top of my head. I think we can get away with chaos for quite a bit longer. And then as I said, we'll just fix that when we start farming in the, in the dried lake. So yeah, with that, I'm gonna thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you again next time when we set out forth from Act 3 in town. Bye bye.